Hello, Bill Cullen here. We call the show Cullen's Adventures, and the expedition we have in mind for today involves a might of time traveling back, back, back across the centuries to a stormy June evening in the year 1792. To most of the people who heard the rain on the roof that night, it was just another summer thunder shower. But to a certain portly Philadelphian, and I doubt if you'll need three guesses to figure out who he was, it was a good bit more than that. Our program is presented as a special service by this station and is furnished by Grolier Incorporated, publishers of the Book of Knowledge, the foremost children's encyclopedia for more than 50 years. Now, back to the month of June, 1752. Thunder shower, portly gentleman from Philadelphia. And what perhaps was not one of the most world-shaking scientific experiments of all time, but certainly was one of the most picturesque. It involved a kite, a key, a bolt of lightning at the lower end of the kite string. Who else but busy old Ben Franklin? Tonight marks the 210th anniversary of his celebrated kite flying outing. And in case you'd like to drop that small historical bombshell into the conversation later at dinner tonight, here are a few further facts to back it up. First of all, as you may or may not remember, electricity was a very popular scientific subject in Ben Franklin's time. Uh, to much the same degree that space exploration, say, is a popular field for scientific study today. Well, nobody knew what electricity was exactly, let alone how to put it to practical use. And Franklin was one of a number of scientists trying to solve the problem. The point of the kite flying experiment was to test out his theory that electricity bore a close relationship to lightning. The ideal equipment for making such a test would have been a tower up in the clouds. But there being no such towers back in 1752, Franklin made do with a kite. As pointed out in the Book of Knowledge, there was nothing much unusual about his kite except that it was made of silk and had a pointed piece of wire standing up above the frame. A long string led from the kite, and near the lower end of the string was a key tied on with a silk ribbon. When the rain had soaked the kite and the string, and when the thunder clouds were directly overhead, Franklin was able to draw sparks from the key by bringing his knuckle near it. As a result of this, and additional experiments, he managed to prove that lightning was indeed akin to the mysterious force called electricity. He was also inspired to invent a handy little gadget called the lightning rod. If the thought has ever occurred to you that flying a kite in the middle of a thunderstorm might not be the safest sport in the world, you are absolutely right. And if the small fry scientists in the family should conceive the idea some summer night of reproducing Mr. Franklin's famous experiment, you would be wise to discourage them with any method at hand. Fortunately for Mr. Franklin, he recognized the potential dangers involved and took the necessary precautions. He made sure that he stood indoors safely out of the rain when he sent his kite aloft. He made certain also that the silk ribbon around the key was dry. Had he not taken these precautions, that rainy night of June the 5th, 1752, might well have been Ben Franklin's last night, and the world would have lost a lightning rod and a great American statesman. Now, in this quick review of the events of 212 years ago tonight, that's all we have time for, except for this quick invitation for the moms and dads in the crowd with youngsters of school age. We put together a booklet containing some more interesting and exciting facts and figures, which I'm sure you'll enjoy reading. And if you'd like to receive a copy to pass on to the youngsters in the house, let us hear from you. There's no charge for it. All we need is your name and address on a postcard. Mail it to Cullen's Adventures, Box 3400, Grand Central Station, New York City, and the booklet's yours. I'll be back again Monday with another of these Cullen's Adventures segments furnished by Grolier Incorporated, publishers of the Book of Knowledge. Till then, thank you and goodbye.